illegal immigration ranks high, abortion ranks high, white supremacy and white nationalism, if I had to make a list again of 100 things, would not be on it. This hearing, in my opinion, is a farce. Show me any place where liberal policies reign supreme, and I will show you a place where the inner cities and the communities are broken, where the families are broken, and where people are feeling hopeless. All we preach is for free markets and capitalism as, as a means to lift the most people out of poverty. That is my belief, and of course, my main thesis is that black people do not have to be Democrats, and we are not owned by the left, and I understand that that causes some people trouble. One of the most powerful, eloquent speakers in the universe, Candace Owens, and she also happens to be a great writer, it looks like. Her new book, Blackout, How Black America Can Make Its Second Escape from the Democrat Plantation. Candace Owens, a privilege to have you on Newsmax. How are you tonight? I'm doing very well. Very excited to have made the bestseller list on The New York Times. It's huge. It's uh, congratulations again. Uh, amazing. Can I ask you this, though? When you were... Obviously, you're incredibly eloquent, such a powerful speaker. Um, is this something you were born with, or is this something you set out to, you know, I'm going to work on my speaking skills as a little girl? Did you say, I want to do that? Is this God-given, or is this something you worked on yourself, or a little bit of both? Um, I would say that when I was very young, I fell in love with words and books and novels. And for me, uh, you know, growing up not very advantaged and, and coming from a home that had very little resources, it was an escape for me. Authors reading their words always made me feel as though I could transport to another world. And from the time I was eight years old, I had set my goal uh, to become a published author, and I majored in English and journalism in college. So it, it's come naturally to me, but it's because um, I started my life early reading a ton of books. And was there a moment where you realized, I'm kind of curious, there must have been, I don't, maybe it was the first time you went viral or the 30th, but when you really broke through, when your message was getting through to people in, in, in a way that had never happened to you before, was there just a moment where you realized, wow, I'm on a much higher level now than I was? You know, I'm very honored to say that that moment always surprises me when it comes. And, you know, I just wake wake up and I'll post a video and just talk to people about things that I'm feeling. And I'm always shocked when millions and millions of people watch it and share my content. Uh, so yeah, it's been happening for the last four years and it's a blessing each and every time that it happens and we're reaching new heights every day. So how black America can make its second escape from the Democrat plantation. It's very bold. And a lot of people, you know, are afraid to go there. Even people who agree with you are afraid to go there. You went there. How how can you give us a preview in this book? How is, can this escape be made? And why are they in prison in the first place? You know, it's through uh, really three categories. It's the breakdown of family, uh, the intentional breakdown of family, which the Democrats sort of schemed up in the mid-1960s via the Great Society Act. Uh, the second portion of that is culture. We have a very toxic culture that perpetuates lies very quickly. Uh, and because we have the youth growing up without uh, a real sense of paternity or maternity, not having a stable household, the youth is relying on culture to tell them between right or wrong. That's why LeBron James suddenly becomes dad and they just believe him when he says black people are being hunted, even though there's no data to support that claim. Uh, and, you know, I'd say the third the third thing we have to look at is the education system, which we know is purely just propaganda, the public school system, which is failing black children. And when 75 percent of them in Los Angeles can't pass a basic reading exam, but all of them know about white privilege. Uh, and so you're seeing a lot of psychological conditioning replace hard academics. And until black Americans actually become educated, uh, learn their history the correct way, start rejecting a culture, you know, Hollywood and the people that are the false idols that are leading us astray uh, and really start going back to the basics of family, we're not going to be able to make a significant change. You know, our culture really is warped and sick in so many regards. You know, uh, when I asked you initially, hey, you are a very powerful speaker and so eloquent, you know, uh, there's this whole school of thought that you're not allowed to say such things to a person of color. Um, and the truth is you are extraordinarily eloquent. But the way the left would dictate the terms, that is somehow racially insensitive. And I say that because I've always been impressed with people who can speak well, going back to George Will on This Week with David Brinkley. Um, the culture is just kind of backwards, and I think it's getting worse, don't you? 
I totally agree. And going back to your point, the irony of that is in one of my chapters, I talk about how I was bullied in middle school because I spoke proper English. And a lot of the black girls would say, you're acting white. Uh, so the irony of that is on the flip side, the left has almost trained black Americans to reject to reject academic success. When you get good grades, you're teased uh, as, as a black person in school because you're seen to be somehow betraying your culture if you care about your academic grades. And that's a part of that toxicity that tips down from the culture, which tells us that we have to speak Ebonics, we have to speak broken English, or else we somehow belong to a white culture. And it's getting increasingly worse when they're starting to teach those sorts of classes today in the school system, where people actually believe that Ebonics should be taught because that feels more natural for a black person, which is really just a, a long-winded way of starting to preach the bigotry of low expectations to the black community. You know who should read this book right away? Uh, it's not going to happen, though. Uh, Joe Biden, um, who, when it comes to race, let's face it, he's as backwards and probably as bigoted as they come. We all saw this. This is just the tip of the iceberg, though, when it comes to offensive statements from Joe Biden. But actually, this was this was really bad. If you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump and you ain't black. Uh, he said that to Charlemagne, the God is, you know, a big deal. He didn't seem to know who he was. I don't think uh, Joe Biden paid nearly the price he should have for that statement. And it revealed quite a lot, don't you think? I think he actually did uh, pay a price for that in the black community, and they're not as keen on him as they were on Hillary Clinton, believe it or not, uh, because he's had these various uh-ohs and because he somehow thinks that he is just due the black vote simply because um, he's not Donald Trump, which is strange, because when you look at Joe Biden's record, which I also detail in my book, and I talk about that moment that you just showed, uh, this is a man that was a pro-segregationist who believed, in his words, that segregation is what black people wanted um, at his time. You know, he was the author, when you talk about the three strikes bill and the 1994 crime bill. Uh, this was the man that was behind it. Uh, so he's got the record that he's trying to cover up in this moment. And I actually don't think that black Americans are behind him. Even the ones that are adamantly opposed to Trump are not um, adamantly in support of Joe Biden. So I think this is going to be an interesting election to watch in terms of exit polling. You know, Candace, I have been saying for a while that America is having a silly conversation about race so we can avoid having uh, a serious and substantive conversation about race. And I feel like the conversation we're having generally across the country about race right now is ludicrous. I just want to make that observation and see if you agree with me. And then the second thing I wanted to ask you, don't you think Barack Obama could be doing more for the black community than what he's doing right now, which seems to be just enjoying the life. He's living the life of a, of a mega rich celebrity. I thought that if he really wanted to help, he could negotiate peace literally between gangs in Chicago. They would listen to him, but he just seems to be so intent on enjoying himself. Now, Barack Obama is a person that took a ton of money before he became president from a lot of people, and he owed a lot of favors. He never really was an autonomous individual, uh, and he's always gone where he's told to go and says what he needs to say. And unfortunately, he's on strings, and he is a political puppet. Um, so there's a lot of things. I love that my catch now jumped into this, but um, there, there are a lot of things that uh, you know Barack Obama could be doing that he could have done as president of the United States, uh, and he decided not to do. And he, at this point in time, just wants to stay out of it. He, he would never actually be bold enough to tell the truth to black Americans. That would assert him as a meaningful leader. And I don't think he's interested in that. I think he's interested in uh, retiring and just collecting checks. Um, and, and, you know, it's a sad case, but I hope it wakes black America up to the fact that just because somebody has your, your same skin color does not necessarily mean they have your best interests at heart. Candace Owens, uh, I'm curious, though, real quick, what's the name of the cat? We just saw him climbing all over your bookshelf. <laughs> Bear. Her name is Bear, and she gets into every single Zoom <laughs> shot. It's amazing. I, she, she knows the camera's on. I love it. Uh, it's beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. All right. Candace Owens, again, continued success. Let's put that up uh, one more time. The book, uh, Blackout, How Black America Can Make Its Second Escape from the Democrat Plantation. And on November 3rd, um, do you think we will be... What do you predict in terms of uh, the election results and black support for Donald Trump? I have said this. I've said 20 points in 2020 is the perfect vision. I've said that for the last three years. People thought I was crazy when I said it. And now some polls are starting to show that Donald Trump may, in fact, uh, get 20 percent of the black vote. And I think it's going to be incredible. Uh, and I'm, I'm very excited about it. And I think the left knows that, which is why they are harping on the race narrative harder than they have ever harped on it before in the past. All right. 
Excellent. Thank you, Candace. All the best. Thank you so much. You, you just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them. Tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people.